Welcome to Gartner ThinkCast. I'm Karen Stokes Lockhart, and today we're addressing a topic that may sound like it's far out, but is rapidly becoming an everyday reality for all sorts of businesses, machine customers. According to Gartner Research, 76% of CIOs and 61% of CEOs believe that demand from machine customers will become significant in their industry by 2030. On average, these leaders predict that over 21% of their revenue will come from machine customers by that date. This suggests a market shift twice as deep and twice as fast as the arrival of e-commerce has been. Joining us to explore how this will affect leaders across customer service, marketing, sales, data and analytics, IT, and more, are Gartner Senior Director Analyst Uma Chala and Director Analyst Brian Weber. Welcome to ThinkCast, Uma and Brian. Well, hello, Uma. Hello, Brian. Uma, I'm really excited to talk with you about this topic today. I know we have a lot of interest in the shift of machine customers, experience launching chatbots and other AI and machine learning initiatives from our previous roles. Plus, you've done a lot of research here at Gartner on this we can share with our listeners. I don't want to get too bogged down in the statistics, especially given what Karen already shared is pretty newsworthy. But I also know there are a few more facts and figures that solidify how impactful the shift from human to machine customers will be. Uma, could you lay those out for us? Sure, Brian. So today, there are already more smart machines than humans on the planet. These machines have the potential to become machine customers and reduce the human customer effort while providing opportunities for consistent revenue to many types of industries. Gartner predicts by 2030, human customers will delegate 25% of all consumer purchases to machines. And by that same time, company-owned bots will automatically raise a billion requests for customer service. All this indicates a massive emerging market. But the challenge is that the current business models are designed for human customers. And the growth opportunity is that significant investment is being made to enable machine customers. I work on this stuff every day, but it's still mind-blowing to hear the size and scope and potential of this. It's clearly imperative that companies seize the growth opportunity in this massive emerging market that is machine customers. Every role within the organization really needs to plan and be prepared to be competitive in this landscape and to start thinking about use cases. There's really no reason for them to not start now. Let's think about marketing as one example. Right now, most marketing organizations devote resources to search engine optimization. In the near future, a big portion of these searches are going to be performed and consumed by bots. Companies have to be attractive to machines using Google rather than just humans using Google. Even more broadly, marketers have to figure out how to market to a bot. Brian, that's a good point on search engines and machine customers. Adding to that, you have the leaders in the organization, all of whom need to start acting now to leverage the opportunity offered by this massive emerging market and not get left behind. For example, CEOs need to put a strategy in place to optimize the lifetime value of connected machines. CTOs need to put in place a tech stack that enables, monitors, and secures machine-to-machine and machine-to-human interactions. CFOs must review and revise rules to govern orders from machine customers. Customer relationship managers need to assess how the relationship paradigm is shifting with the increase in machine interactions. If human customers aren't interacting with the company at the same level, then what are the new potential opportunities for revenue and maintaining and sustaining relationships? All very true. Are you seeing this play out in any industry more than others right now? Well, it's quite broad, but the most immediate impact will be seen in industries involved in routine and repeatable transactions, mainly in manufacturing, finance, and retail. In some of these sectors, machine customer transactions are already happening without human customers having to step in. For example, printers can order ink cartridges on their own. Recurring dog food orders fall to virtual assistants. But in the industries where complex decision-making processes are involved, it's going to take more time. For example, the home buying and the car buying industries. Yeah, that's interesting on the more complex items. But let's go back to talk more about marketing, things like pitching parking spots to autonomous cars. It won't be as important to be two blocks away from your destination anymore at work. It will open up a whole new marketplace to try to attract these autonomous cars. 
Trucking logistics is another perfect example of something that a bot will market to and schedule itself probably in the near future. And that really has potential for positive supply chain implications. As all sorts of organizations shift their focus to be more customer centric, marketers from the CMO down are tasked with playing a major part in the customer experience. Tune into the webinar linked in the show notes to learn how roles are changing and what you and your company need to do to become more customer centric. One huge thing I've learned about is the open source framework coming to the home automation industry later this year after a few delays. Customers are going to be able to have an Apple device that talks to a Google device that talks to an Amazon device. The framework is called Matter, and it's a new smart home connectivity standard created by a working group of more than 200 companies to make smart home products or Internet of Things, IoT, compatible with one another using a single standard instead of the many different ones that exist today. This is going to make it a lot easier for companies and developers to build smart home and IoT devices that really seamlessly work together, regardless of their brand, and to connect with consumers using this technology in the future, whether they're human or machine. I believe that the existing virtual assistants that are already in our homes will be the connection to -to machine-to-machine commerce for B2C. What do you think? This is good stuff, Brian, and I really look forward to some of these features in action. Obviously, there are pros and cons to both machine and human customers. Do you want to talk about some of the trade-offs with the adoption of machine customers? Sure. Machines are transparent to a point. They're logic and rule-based, and their motivation is to solve a problem. Their assumptions will be visible in their rules and queries, as well as the decisions that they make. Humans often have their intentions hidden during the buying process, and machines really don't have a poker face. Focus on solving a problem, but how they'll do it may not be clear, especially when there's really complicated algorithms involved. A good thing for consumers is that machines can process a large amount of information to make a decision. With that ability, they're carefully collect and weigh the data to make an informed choice without being influenced by emotion. So they focus solely on objective outcomes like, is this item available? Price, make a determination of value, probably better than humans do at times. I know I've bought a lot of items that I've regretted based on advertising in the past. Unlike human whose sales, customer success, and public relation teams are accustomed to whining and dining, machines don't really have to be delighted to earn their loyalty. Certain imagery that a marketer uses today aren't really going to sway machines because they don't have emotions. Sorry, celebrity spokespeople, but it's going to be a big change. What are some of the downsides? Well, those were some really good points, Brian. But before I talk about the downside, adding to what you said, there is also a huge revenue upside given machine customers are more reliable and predictable than human customers. And because machine customers are very data-driven, they help minimize waste by ordering exactly what customers need at the right time. But like with anything else, there is risk. Machines don't yet understand contexts such as emotion and empathy, which can lead to incorrect decisions. Bad actors may induce machines to make unnecessary purchases. And if high security is not built in and regularly updated in machine customers, there's a real risk of hacks, disruptions, and loss of personal data. And finally, humans may resist the introduction of machines as that might impact their jobs. What you hit on with that last point is a big one for me. You're getting in a conversation about the pace of cultural change. I think the fear of machines taking jobs is really already here and people are navigating. Like at the store with self-checkout and one of our favorite topics, self-service through phone systems and chatbots. Technology is already here in so many ways, but there's a whole customer segment out there that doesn't trust in all the multi-channels that we have today. You know, They still prefer a phone call or visiting a physical location because that feels more secure and trustworthy to them. So turning over decisions to a bot is going to be scary. That said, there's always a new generation of customers that values convenience, and that generation is going to be on board with the ease of machine buying offers. Thanks, Brian. Really enjoyed talking on this very exciting topic. Yes, very much.